Back with the next beer. Uh, you guys had a chance to smell it, to and taste it. What do you think? Let's go, let's start again with uh, Killian. Um, it's very nice. Um, straight away, it, it, it's a stout, or it's just a really hearty porter. Um, a lot of like kind of uh, roasted malts and like dark fruit, kind of raisiny, kind of um, berries and you know those kind of things. Um, I t uh, give it a little taste, and it feels really slick in the mouth, like a thick, thicker mouthfeel. So I'd say it's probably got about six or up percent alcohol. Um, I'm going to stick to that for the rest of this section. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, the microphone is in front of you. Um, it is very dark and rich. I, I get the kind of raisin and. You're wearing your, your blind mask. You can't see the color yet, don't you? <laughs> Can you? Well, it tastes like almost like a brandy wine, um, sort of raisins and currants, and it has a very dry finish, though I say, um, and it has a pretty good aroma of raisin and sweetness. And um, so, as to who makes this beer, I I don't have a clue to be honest. Okay, Ben. Um. Unless it's a red stout, I'm pretty sure it's a stout. <laughs> um, it's got, as as described, this sort of dark fruit, some raisiny kind of thing on the palate, but it's also got some kind of classic stout aromas of sort of vanilla, coffee, chocolate. Um, very expressive on, on the palate, very nice, very dry. Nice stout. Okay, Karen? What's going on? Okay, there you go. Uh, it's black. It has to be black. I know I said the last one was black, but this one it must be. Um, it's, it's got a big. You guys will be disappointed if it's not. Yeah. It, 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 it's got a big nose. It's got a, a really nice kind of yeast character to the nose. Loads of dark malts. It's, it's really, to me, the taste is really licorice. There's coffee in there. It, it, it's all big black beer flavors. Um, I initially would have thought it was a little under six, but Killian is kind of swaying me now. But between five and six percent, oh, I'd say. Last one. Yeah, exactly. Between five and six percent. What's the? What do you think, Sarah? Very, very the very microphone is still in front of you, Sarah. Um, six is probably a good guess. It's definitely more than the last one. Um, so I think the last one was four point two. So yeah, I think this maybe around six. Okay. What do you think, Ben? I think it's a bit lower than that. A bit lower? Yeah, it's, it's got a very expressive palate and it's got a big mouthfeel, but um, you don't get the kind of heat off it that um, you would expect off a six. Well, so I think it's... Some beer can, pretty, can hide the alcohol pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Belgian. Alcohol adds <laughs> to the mouthfeel as well. So. Yeah. Uh, Kill you? Um, can I go one step further and try, and try and guess the actual beer? Yes. At great risk to my reputation. Um, I'm going to stick with the raisin thing, and it's it's thick, and it's lovely. It's got a lovely mouthfeel. Um, it's definitely a stout to me. Um, isn't there a St. Mel's, they do um, a raisin and oatmeal stout? I'm afraid not. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was never that good anyway. <laughs> but that, that, I think that's, that's why I wanted to do the blind test, because yeah. it, it, I know what you guys are having, and I, I can hear what you guys are telling me. And... Uh, some of it's completely off, so it, it's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting to to see this and do it. That, that, I think that's quite so a, a, an experiment. Once one time started. So <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of Belfast Black from Whitewater. Like I don't think it is, but um, it's got that expressiveness on the palate and on the nose, and quite a wide range of flavors: licorice, coffee, vanilla. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, I'm not going to guess it. But I, I think it's a step up from your standard Irish dry, like stout, or at least Irish yeah. dry style um, stout. For me, I, if I had to, I'd lean towards West Kerry as, a, as, a, as, a, as a kind of a stab in the dark. Cool door, okay. I, yeah, think, um, maybe. I think if I had to guess, I'd say maybe the Devil's Half Acre. I think that's what it's called by Porterhouse. It's kind of a brandy wine, I think. So, mm -hmm. so is this something you would like to drink again? In front of a fire, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cold day. Yes. If they didn't have Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> what, 
about you, uh, Killian? Killian? Would you drink this again? Is yeah. it something you would recommend? Yeah, definitely. It's it's really tasty. It's uh, It's got a lot of flavor. And again, I don't think it's too much alcohol. Like, it's not up 8 or 9%. It's definitely, for me, down around 6%. And um, this would be really good on cask, I imagine. Um, really warming and, you know, nice and full and flavorsome. Yeah, I'd have it again, definitely. Do you, do you want to take another guess? Uh, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. That didn't work very well the first time. Uh, it could be a chocolate stout by somebody, maybe. It's, it's, it's I a bit milky. I have to tell you, it's... Um, a brewery that I've only discovered recently, uh, and this beer is so new, it's not even listed on the website. So good luck to find out who it is. <laughs> um, so, what about you guys? Is this something you would have again, uh, Karen and uh, uh, Ben? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's it's lovely beer. It's full of characters, full of flavor. It's yeah, definitely something you would recommend. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you guys take off your blind mask? And the beer we had is a Brian Black. Brian Brewhouse. It's it's a porter. Oh. It's actually a porter, and uh, the ABV is seven point seven. Wow! <laughs> so <laughs> like way off there. I was I was thinking yeah. five point five. Yeah. I was guessing because you said we we're working from the bottom up and up. <laughs> in IBU, in IBU. That's a well hidden mm. seven point. It is. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's very well hidden. Yeah. 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 And no, no, none of you said porter. You all went straight pretty much for, for stout. Yeah. Yeah. What's the difference? Potato, potato. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it, it's such a clouded area. You could, it's, yeah. the, it's, it's all shown itself yeah. arguing the difference between stout and porter internationally. Yeah. So, sorry, Ben? It's a dead distinction. Speaking of the microphone. Sorry, it's a dead distinction. It doesn't exist anymore. People call it whatever they want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like stout porter or porter stout. I mean. well, what, what's... Uh, What's a what's a, a black ale? It's a stout. Yeah, it's not so important. <laughs> An unhopped black IPA. Still, no, I mean, like these names exist for reasons. And like I'm pretty like like if I was thinking of a porter, I'd expect it to be really drinkable. Actually, like the last one, which is a red ale. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, but then like a porter at seven percent. That's I'd call that a stout, especially with this. You know, Maybe a Russian imperial and, porter. Russian imperial porter. Yeah. Well, I had a porter recently. It was ten point five. Uh, it was it's yeah. called a porter. I, what about you, Sarah? What, what's your opinion on, on the debate of a porter versus? Um, yeah, I think the the distinctions are more important when you're judging because um, you drink something that's lovely and then you're like, okay, that was great. How can I mark it down? <laughs> so you go, <laughs> you go through the the criteria and say, well, that was beautiful, but it wasn't true to style. Um, but for a normal drinker, like. You're going to drink what you like. The only thing I'll say is if you really wanted a porter and what they gave you was a brandy wine, you might be upset because you didn't get what you wanted. But yeah, I think having two strict definitions between porter and stout is it's hard to do now because things just become so blurred. But yeah, because like the definitions really only exist in the beers. You can have all the definitions you like, but if one beer calls itself a porter and it's by definition a stout, the definitions almost become meaningless because we could all pick porters that are stronger and bigger and bodied than stout than things that are called stout. So yeah, I think yeah. the the title of the beer is more just to allow the consumer to predict what they're getting in the glass, but it, it, but to argue be, too but much if about manufacturers. Yeah, can you use them willy nilly? Then it, it's a complete confusion. Yeah. yeah, and we could talk about this online. <laughs> <laughs> So, you surprised? Alan, could you oh, offer us a, def- a difference between a porter and a stout? <laughs> not really. I'm not, I'm not a big expert on either one of them. Um, I'm all well, brewer, but I haven't really brewed it. Stout I is extra stout. stout porter. So, yeah. assuming it's either a stout body or more alcohol, and most stouts are, are quite low percentage. Well, I understand that the, the, um, it's a question of malt. You should, the, the, the roastiness in the malt shouldn't be as present in the porter than it is in the, um, in the start. The roastiness okay. should be... <laughs> <laughs> ben, you are in the corner. You're not testing the next one. I'm convinced. <laughs> We'll be back in um, in a few minutes for the next uh, blind tasting. I hope you enjoyed the show so far, and see you in a bit. 